so then, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, this film? Um, basically, I've been working on the script for about 15 years. Um, um, it's taken me that long to kind of fully research it and to get it in my head of how to condense that five year period down into a two hour film. Um, um, we, I, I basically, after we'd done on Goethe War there, and that's 25 years ago, um, the next project I wanted to do after that was Dan Breen. Um, and I, I've struggled with the script. I, I've, I went back and I did the Masters there recently and just to see if I could even get a, a greater understanding of script writing. Um, it doesn't really help every new script is a new baby. You can't learn that shit. Um, but um, but I, I think I've kind of decided on the structure of it. Um, the whole first half of the film is the lead up to Salahed Beg. Whereas in most films like this, they'd say start with the action, start with Salahed Beg and go on. Whereas I, I think the story is the story of how they got the struggle going and how it started in Tipperary because of their endeavours before that. So I, I think the majority of the story is the lead up to Salahid Beg. That's why it takes place midway in the film. And then it's just everything they did since Salahid Beg, which further kept the machine of dwarven pens going. Um, they were kind of the first rebels who were full-time on the run. Um, therefore... Collins employed them up in Dublin in the early days back when they kind of couldn't get gunmen um, this is before he formed the squad they formed the first auxiliary squad which later on became the 12 apostles of Collins but um, the big four were the genesis of that in Dublin as well and the first spies killed in Dublin would have been carried out by them so yeah, that's the whole story as well. That's the second half, and of course the tragic. For yeah, for death um, sorry, I didn't to jump in. Um, can you explain? Can you explain to people who wouldn't know anything about Irish history, uh, or anything about these two main characters? Can you explain who Tracy and Breen are first, and um, maybe how a, a little bit of history of how they got together and how it came to be so famous and stuff. Yeah, um, Breen and Tracy are just two normal lads in their 20s. Um, but Tracy had a, an immense love of Irish history, and especially the history of Tipperary and the Irish language. He was heavy in the Gaelic League and stuff as well. Um, so he had a great love of history, and seemingly there was a brilliant national school teacher in Tipperary who really instilled in their pupils. Um, Dini Lacey would have been a the pupil of theirs as well. Just, just great love of Ireland and um, the, the fact that Ireland was kind of robbed from us by the English and stuff. And a lot of the other schools throughout the country probably wouldn't have got that. You know, it would have been more the English history. Um, that and Tipperary's strong history with rebellion. I mean, there's an expression where Tipperary goes, Ireland follows, like, you know, and Tracy was very much of that idea as well, that if the strike was made, everyone would jump on board. And when it didn't happen in 1916, they were very gutted because Tracy was cycling around to all the different um, cells in Tipperary getting them organised. They were organised. They were just waiting for Eamon Dwyer to come back with word from Limerick that Limerick were organised in Cork. And then everyone was going to go, but Tipperary was ready to go until they were told to stand down. And the lads were very gutted by this. All the leaders, even the local leaders in Tipperary, all the Sinn Féin leaders throughout the country were all imprisoned. The volunteers were dead. Um, throughout the whole country after 1916 all the leaders were imprisoned and so Tracy actually took it upon himself Tracy and Breen, Tracy swore Breen into the IRB and Tracy 
took it upon himself to reorganize the volunteers in Tipperary. Uh, he did so very small cells in each place. Um, events after 1916, um, like cons the conscription issue and stuff like that, rallied a lot more people back to the banner or, say, the volunteers. So a lot of new people with the threat of conscription and stuff then started joining the volunteers and started building momentum. Um, so that was looking really good and Tracy was delighted and they thought, yeah, we're getting prepared. Like, you know, the, they had about maybe 60 different volunteers at different cells where it used to be 10. Um, yeah, so um, um, with the conscription issue, there was great popularity again for the volunteers whereas they'd been acting in a vacuum before that, but Tracy had secretly organised it. But then, with the armistice and the threat of um, conscription was gone, a lot of the volunteers left as well, so they were kind of back at square one with just a handful of men they had. Um, so they decided that something had to be done. GHQ wouldn't give any sanctions for anything. Um, so then, when Seamus... Um, Seamus Robinson came on board then they had he was the catalyst and they decided to strike Tracy famously said if anyone if you want to start a war you have to kill someone and we want to start a war so Salahid Beg was the start of that and everything all their actions then uh, just kept the whole war machine going what became the war of independence so the genesis of the war of independence I, I would say started in Tipperary um, what inspired you to uh, start this project? Um, well, like I said, I've been thinking about it for years. Um, why it's taken years is because it's such a scary project. It's a massive thing. And um, people think I'm nuts and they'd be right, because you'd have to be nuts to do this, like, you know. And um, It's going to be very much um, a labour of love for everyone involved, you know, but... Um, it's been made by artists in Tipperary and everyone's bringing their their top game to it. It is going to be a no-budget film and we've decided that we it is going to be no-budget and so it's going to be entirely creative and it's all down to... Um, it's going to be a community med film, basically. So, yeah, we need everything. The, the fact that we're not paying for anything, we need everything for free. We need extras. Um, we we'll need costumes. We we'll need people to turn up on the day in basic costume. Uh, we'll have to collect certain costumes. But there's also serious things we need. We need serious uniforms. We need British Army uniforms. Uh, we may have to do some fundraising for them. Any of the expensive scenes involving action or military or stuff like that, we'll shoot towards the end, um, seemingly because, and hopefully as the machine of this starts working, maybe we will get some other grants and stuff. So we'll save the big set pieces for the end, and in the meantime we'll just cut our teeth on um, the easier, smaller scenes. Um, everyone working on the project is working on it for free, um, so it's we're very much juggling people's spare time when we can all kind of get together and collaborate on this. Um, that's why we're thinking, um, realistically, it could take up to three years to finish the whole project, because it is a feature film, it's going to be a two-hour feature film drama, this isn't a documentary, like, you know. Um, um, we, we don't even even rehearsing for a play say you have X amount of rehearsal time and you have a place to rehearse we're doing much, pretty much everything off the hip um, which is difficult and a challenge but I'm hoping it'll also bring um, ingenuity and creativity as well to the project like you know but it'll be mostly shot at probably weekends if that's where most people will be around so it'll be shot very much like a jigsaw, and we'll work on each scene at a time, shoot it, weekend, cut it, move on to the next scene. So I'm thinking maybe realistically three years, but I ideally I'd love it to be finished in two years in time for the 2019 commemorations. Um, so that's the goal, but um, 
realistically I'm saying three years because I, I know the amount of work and effort that has to go into the project and um, the fact that we are everyone is working in their spare time so it's um, it probably is going to take that long but hopefully two years but um, what, what we basically need um, like I'm saying this is a community med film it, people need to um, contribute in whatever way they may like you know some people might like working behind the scenes and organising and helping out um, some people might like to be an extra on, on screen in the background um, um, collecting costumes certain props we'll have to collect or we'll ask people to donate them or borrow them to the cause stuff like high nelly bikes and um, um, I won't say firearms even though I'm sure there's a few firearms and a few farmhouses around but um, hopefully we'll be getting replicas for that but um, it, it sounds very much up in the sky but um, I know myself the people involved in it and I know that it can be made for low budget and, and like he asked me why am I making it now or why did I decide it and the answer is um, I just couldn't come up with an excuse not to make it anymore and digital filmmaking it can be done cheaply now and there's just no excuse before you could have said oh there's no money for this and blah de blah and a load of people use that as an excuse not to do stuff that they have been bob on about and I've been bob on about this for 20 years so it's time to put up or shut up you know but I, everyone involved, there's a terrible lot of passion for the project because so many people have such respect for these people, and in Tipperary they're they're revered, um, and rightly so. So it's a great responsibility we're taking on. But um, and having said that, it's all going to be made by artists as well. There's no. Um, political parties or anything involved in this this is very much a labour of love and it'll be an artistic endeavour um, when it's finished and I'm hoping it's something that we can all be proud about but having said that we have a, a terrible lot of resources as well you know I mean um, we have camera people we have editors um, we have you our visual effects supervisor, which we shouldn't, no low budget thing would normally have. So I mean, we have that, and um, and I mean the use of After Effects and editing gear like that, and um, we've made contact with people with vintage cars and different reenactment groups, and there's just enough resources there to make this as a community film. And the script is there, and I think the script is good. Or the story of Breen and the Big Four is a good story. Um, this isn't going to win any Oscars. This is a community-made film, a no-budget film, but I think it'll be watchable even just because of the story. Um, if someone wants to take it and remake it, then in Hollywood's great, you know, but um, I feel my responsibility, or I've just always wanted to get the story out there. And so I think now is the time, and we're gearing up for it. Um, so yeah, hopefully when it gets going, then um, a few more people will get on board, and um, we'll be having certain scenes. Um, we'll probably save them till later in the production, but there'll be street scenes and stuff. So we'll be asking people to come out in vintage gear and get dressed up and make a day out of it and um, stuff like that so th th there's um, a load of ways that people can help out if they want to get involved um, they can just email me dannybobodwyer at gmail.com or um, through our page we have a page Cash Alerts and Heritage Films on Facebook and you can track our progress on that and stuff um, so yeah watch this space